hint. Think about the momentum principle. Um, so you push a book across the table. And you find that in order to keep it moving, you have to keep pushing. Keeping moving with constant momentum, you have to keep pushing with a constant force. Which statement explains this? Uh, a net force is necessary to keep an object moving. To make the net force on the book zero, you have to pu push with a force equal and opposite to the friction force on the book. Or the force you exert has to be slightly larger than the friction force. This is not a quiz. You may talk to each other. OK, so we've got to get back into the habit of thinking using physics principles. OK, we, we have, to, have to use what we've got to think about these things. So let's, let's see what the momentum principle tells us about this and how we can use it to think about this. Remember that these equations are not just for plugging numbers into. You come to this class able to plug numbers into equations, so that's not what you're here to learn. These equations also tell you about ways to reason about what's possible and what has to happen even without numbers. And that's, that's the game we're playing here. So we're going to take this form. First, let's consider this form of the momentum principle. So we have the momentum at some time in the future depends on both the momentum a system has now and the net force acting on the system now applied during some small time interval delta t. So since this thing is moving at a constant momentum, that means its velocity is constant. Um, so we can, we can take some arbitrary time delta t. We could say two seconds. Let's just give it some value two seconds. And since the statement says constant momentum, what does that tell us about the relationship between p future and p now? They have to be the same, don't they? That constant momentum means if it has moment, some momentum now, two seconds in the future, we'll have the same momentum. These things have to be equal. So in fact, these things are the same. What does that tell us about F net delta T? So if we have, so this is, there's no change. So if we're going to add something to this number and get the same number, it better be zero, isn't it? So. So this is what physics means. It means reasoning with the principles. And the answer you get is not always going to be the thing you expect just from your seat of the pants naive gut reaction. And that's OK. You still have to reason with the principles. And then you have to, to, to reason through it, take it seriously, come to some conclusion. And if it's not what you would have expected, then you have to sit and think, OK, What's going on? Why are my expectations different? These word, these terms have precise meanings in physics. And so this has to be 0. So if F net has to be 0, delta t is not 0, then we need to think about the forces on the book. So here's the book. And let's say you're exerting a force. Let me draw that. Label it. You're exerting a force um, that way. So we'll call that F by U. The, the table, so here's the table, is exerting a frictional force in the opposite direction, making it hard to slide. And there's also some other forces. There's the gravitational force of by the Earth pulling down. The table certainly must be pushing up. 
This is often called a normal force because it's perpendicular to the surface. So we write F sub n. We know those two things have to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction because the block isn't suddenly rising up into the air or burrowing down through the table. So its momentum in the y direction isn't changing. Momentum in the x direction isn't changing. It must mean that that F net x is zero, which must mean that that an F net x is F by u in the x direction plus F friction in the x direction. And that has to be zero. So those two forces have to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. That's what we get from reasoning with this principle. Now, there is an objection that you could make. And you could say, well, the book's sitting here. And to get it going, it's going to speed up from zero speed to some finite speed. So its momentum is going to go from zero to some number in the x direction. There must be a non-zero net force exerted on it during that time. That's correct. So there has to be some little transient where it speeds up, where the force I exert is bigger than the force by the table until it starts moving. And then, though, if I really do keep it at constant speed, what the momentum principle tells us is I don't have to push harder than the, table, the friction force by the table. In fact, I better push exactly with the same magnitude of a force. If I push harder, then that force won't be zero, and the book's going to speed up. Now, to slow it down, OK, so I'm pushing. It's traveling at constant speed. I slack off, and the book stops. That must mean that during the slowing down period, the force by me was smaller in magnitude than the friction force by the table. So the table slowed it down. So yes, absolutely, during those short periods when it's speeding up, getting to constant speed, and when it's slowing down, going back to zero speed, the, forces were, the net force was not zero. But during the time when it's moving at constant speed, and by implication, the, the question tells you that this is the period we're considering. Those forces had to be equal and opposite. And that's what it means to reason from a principle. And I think one of the reasons that we, we all trip over this from time to time is partly that we're so focused on ourselves. So what, what seems to us important is that we're pushing. We feel it. We have all this feedback in our nerve endings and our muscles, and we feel and we're so focused on our force that we don't always think about the fact that objects, inanimate objects like the table are interacting with it too. We live in a world so full of friction that, that we feel like what well, we have to exert a force to keep something moving. And that's true, you did, but you're not the net force. You're not the only thing in the universe. And I think it's hard for us to, to, to keep that in mind. So this is, this is a, common, a common issue, but it's, it's not, it's something you need to watch for. Okay, so try not to trip over it. But really take this seriously. 